For day nine of this shutdown, the word of the day is going to be irony. Why irony? I'll tell you. I work every day with Mr. Zaragoza. I see him in the hallway every day. We talk about bikes sometimes. Sometimes we talk about, you know, math, English, things like that. We say hello, we get along. However, I've never really sat down to talk with Mr. Zaragoza. And because of this closure, I had the opportunity to do just that today. Mr. Zaragoza and I had a long 40 minute conversation, don't worry, it's cut down here, about everything. From math, to what he's reading, to what he's listening to, to what are the things that we can find that are productive for ourselves interiorly during this time of a slowdown. I hope you enjoy this interview as much as I did, and I hope you enjoy getting to know Mr. Zaragoza as much as I did too. This is a great opportunity to listen carefully to one another. A little side note, you'll notice that the video production on this is of quite low quality. Thanks to everybody being home, my internet was going very slow because of all the Netflix and Talk Tick videos. So, if you don't want to watch stuttering video, put on some nature videos in another tab, turn off the sound on that, and just listen to this as if it were a podcast while watching Mount Everest fly by your face. Sit back, enjoy this interview, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Uh, so we are live. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, Mr. Zaragoza? Um, where are you broadcasting live from? Uh, what's your break or what's your closure look like so far? Um, well, I'm in my house right now. You caught me in the uh, the boys' room right now. This is where me and my puppies come to hang out. And my wife says, "All right, I can't stand you for a few minutes, so get out of here." <laughs> Hold and, on, time, uh, so time right out, now, time one second. I'm going to start my. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but you're choppy. You know that, right? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to. Hold on. I don't know what. Let me quit out of all this junk. All right, how about now? Is it better now? Yeah, actually, yeah. Okay. How, how do I look? look okay is my lighting right yeah your lighting's your lighting's right on oh you know what let me plug that in all right okay now we're back so you're saying uh you're uh broadcasting live from what 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 was this room this is the boys room okay this is where all the uh the males in the house go to when uh, the ladies in the house are tired of us okay so who who are all the males in the house the house are there is me. I like to consider myself alpha male, but it doesn't really work out that way. There is my puppy Bruno, and there's my puppy Oscar. And then when it comes to the ladies, there's my wife Alexis, and then there's a little mini who's a little Chihuahua. So the Chihuahua mini runs the house. The Chihuahua runs the house in this place. But the Chihuahua is not allowed inside of inside of the boys' room. Well, she's very, um, how can I say this? Um, she's like, an, she's the alpha in like the whole house, I think, because the only time she comes into the boys' room is when she has to poop in it. Okay. And so, but, so, but so other, that's just her being uh, aggressive, I think. Her right, passive aggressive. Right. Where it's just like, you know what, boys, I'm tired of you. I'm go poop. So, so she me keep, and Bruno usually have to clean up and make sure that we don't step on any landmines. So she keeps you in check. Yeah, she keeps us in check. Great. Um, so this is day. What day is this of the of the? Actually, I lost track of the days. A little bit of me is going a little crazy, and I forgot it was Wednesday. I was like, I'm just trying to go ahead and keep busy every single day. That means we've only got uh, an hour and five minutes left of school because it is an early out day. It is an early out day, which I appreciate. Yeah. So, um, so what have you been doing, uh, for this has got to be day. So day nine, day 10, what have you been doing to, uh, -huh. uh kind of stay occupied, uh, during this time? Um, but, um, before, I don't know if you caught when we were earlier, but I'm trying to do all the things that my wife has been telling me to do for the last few months. 
and I've been doing a few things that like keep my interest. So one of the things that my wife had me do is hang up some paintings and hang up some like decorative things on the wall in the house. But I have an older home, so the the walls are not made up of your regular drywall. It's like a hard, really thick type of plaster. So I gotta go ahead and break up the old uh, the old Milwaukee drill here. There we the go. Room and go ahead and get myself some holes in the right spot. There we so go. That's pretty cool. I don't know if you've been in my room lately when we were in 334, but I like my plants. Uh, I've been kind of uh, nursing my plants. I took them all from around the house and I put them together so that they could uh, keep each other company a little bit more. Okay. I brought my uh, artificial light and they're, uh, they're sunbathing. They're having a good time over there. So, so, so you brought my electrical school. So you brought your plants from home to be with your plants from school as well. Yep. They're all together right now. Oh, that's awesome. You, you, you successfully I send you a picture of them so you can go ahead and show everybody I, later. I'll, I'll, I'll post it up. I'm still learning how to do some of this movie editing stuff, but if we're lucky right above, like right above here, there will be a beautiful banner of your plants sunbathing there. Like where you go with this, Mr. Buse. So um, I wanted to ask, uh, obviously students have been working remotely for a bit now um, mm -hmm. on their own. And, you know, there's some, uh, maybe not confusion, but, you know, grading is obviously different. Some of our usual motivations maybe have disappeared in terms of how and why we do work. So what would you say to students who are thinking like, ah, oh, why, why do I need to do math right now? And I, what is math going to do for me? What's the purpose of doing math right now if it's not um, necessarily for my grade? Well, uh, it kind of really depends on your, your viewpoint, sir. Um, I have had students in class be like, when will I go ahead and use this ever in my life? And it's like, you know, if you're asking that question, I mean, and I'm being very reflective right now. I think when you ask a question like that in class, specifically a math class, I think I lost the student. I think the student is kind of disengaged or possibly bored. And you ask that question to to break that boredom out. So when will you go ahead and use the math that you study in class? I don't necessarily think that you're gonna wake up on a beautiful Saturday morning and say, I think today I need to use the quadratic formula <laughs> in order to go ahead and get my coffee going. It's not gonna work out that way. I think today I'm gonna go ahead and for lunch, I'm gonna redraw another sine or cosine function. It doesn't work out that way. I think studying mathematics allows you to go ahead and really take your brain and massage it and build it and build it and build it so that you can be uh, more intelligent in terms of thinking critically, logically, even build up your common sense. I mean, mathematics is a language that you improve just like we do in our English and our Spanish and anything else that we communicate. If you want to talk about like a specific, well, look at the um, the, if you have been on Facebook, I think for me as an adult, depending on what my interests are and what the algorithms that Facebook thinks of the things I'm interested in, you'll see two sides. You'll see things of people thinking, hey, everything that's going on in this world right now, it's all fluff. It's the media trying mm -hmm. to scare you. It's the media trying to go ahead and control you. Then you've got the other side over here. They're like, forget what they're saying over here. Look at the graphs, look at the numbers and study the trend of what it is that we're saying. So if you ask me, why do I need to study mathematics? You can exercise your brain so that you can go ahead and believe what you wanna believe based on the truth and logic and reason instead of being told what to go ahead and believe by somebody who can create a cute little meme. So, so you're, it's almost like you're saying math is another language of truth in the world. Math is a language of truth in the world. Right. I think it's, uh, it, it most definitely is. I mean, you can go ahead and, and look just even, I'm trying to stay away talking about Corona-19, but, but if math class ever went ahead and impacted your daily life, is this not the example of what we're doing right now? On the news, you hear about the doubling rate you'll hear about exponential growth, you'll hear about the logistical growth model and how things are gonna go ahead and plateau, curve off or fall off. 
that's studying functions right there. That's what your my kids in my pre-calculus class went ahead and you know um, were focusing on, and really diving deep. I mean, they you ask a kid in my pre pre-calculus class, they have studied logistical and exponential growth models, and we did like a full week of nothing but virus strikes. But if I didn't do a good job of trying to keep them engaged and keep them interested, maybe it's something that didn't stick with them. But if I did do a good job, they're able to go ahead and say, hey, those are the kind of things that Saragossa was talking to us about in class. This directly applies to my life right now. Right. So this is interesting because I think I, I often think, and I'm, I'm going to confess my sins here, but I often think of... Uh, Let's be honest with one another this yeah. beautiful morning. <laughs> I often think of, you know, oh, well, you use math to apply... Um, you use math to apply to situations. Oh, I need to build a, build a building. I'll use math and I'll apply my math so I can complete something. Whereas you're saying, no, math is a way to interpret the world. And again, I'm going back to the language thing, but, um, and, and, and so obviously we're talking right now about coronavirus a lot, but you see this playing out just in everyday situations in terms of using math to interpret the world. Right now, absolutely. Before we left, before we went on break, I was showing my kids the whole idea about the flattening the curve, which was trending for a while. So it is my education and my background and my understanding of the subject that allowed me to go ahead and share that with the students. And I wow. think that that helped me be the, the more critical thinker of a person that I am, which is why I was telling students, like, it might be a week, it might be two weeks, that's what people tell you, my opinion, it's going to be longer that we're going to be out. And yeah. if you have students that can study and think like that and practice breaking apart their brain cells and struggling and really asking the questions of the five whys when you're trying to figure out something or learn something new, I, I just think that they're better off for it. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, what's it hurt? So go ahead and study. All you can do is improve yourself. Right, right. Right. And, 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 and yeah, and I agree. I just, yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, and I do think sometimes focusing on, oh, what, what am I going to get out of this? That's what's, what, how am I going to tomorrow have another $5 because of what I just studied, I think can be a, a dangerous way to look at what we study. So what, what originally, go ahead. I think that maybe falls along the trend of how, we have changed a society which is instant gratification. Uh -huh. You know, it's like you, I want something, I can order it on Amazon and it'll be here within 24, 48 hours, which right. is ridiculous. Right. But you're so used to things like that, that if I don't gate, if I don't see the immediate benefit of me working towards something right now, I view it as a something that I'll never go ahead and use, which is right. not the case. Right. Um, what originally got you into math? What was, um, or before you wanted to be, and, and, and maybe add this onto there, before you wanted to be a math teacher, what did you want to be? I know there's well, two actually, questions. Well, that's fine. I, I, can, I remember, because I've been asked this before. Um, after high school, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to go ahead and do with myself. I knew that I wanted to take advantage of my bilingual my ability to speak English and Spanish and I was pretty good with people so I thought I would go ahead and have some fantasy job where I'd work for a company or start a company that I'd go from here to Spain or here to Mexico and like negotiate make some money I had that business mentality mm -hmm. and I attended junior college at Joliet Junior College and my one of my business teachers Mr. O'Connor um, if you know my personality, you know I could be a bit of a smart one sometimes here or there, you know. So I was kind of like having a good time in class, and I think he got a little annoyed with me. He's like, if you think this is so easy, why don't you teach class? <laughs> so the challenge, uh, he gave me, uh, I think like by the end of the week, to go ahead and preview some content and some material. And I was able to, he gave me 20 minutes to go ahead and teach class, and I kid you not, I liked it. Yeah. I liked it. I like the sharing of knowledge. I liked, uh, I liked it all. And since then, that's when I changed my major at the Joliet Junior College and I started to go ahead and do mathematics. Wow. So, yeah. so his, his, little, his little kind of smart comeback, I don't know, I wouldn't call that backfired, but it, 
it impacted the rest of my life. Wow. Um, yeah. And then did you chose math? Was math your favorite subject in high school? Or was that just because in business you were already doing so much math stuff? I was already taking a few math classes, uh, trying to be a, like a, a business major. They had the prerequisites courses, like the, the list of courses that you should go ahead and try to take. And uh, I was never really good at the language of English. And that I struggled with quite a bit. I felt mathematics was very, it was black and white at times. Mm -hmm. It was like, this is the result of what I'm trying to achieve. There was a system in place. There was a way of thinking. I liked the, the geometry courses at the college level, the proofs. I really like, okay, well, this is a true statement because X, Y, and Z. It really made me think hard. Versus like in an English class, there is a, there's a, there's a beauty to the English language. There's a, you can say it this way or you can say it that way. And I really struggled with that. Yeah. I like the black and white aspect of mathematics. And I love how difficult it was. And I can go ahead and just simply reason things out. And yeah. I, that's why I stuck with it. Yeah. Um, and then how long have you been teaching math? Let's see. I want to say this is my 15th year. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So since that, all in the 21st century. Yes. Yes. Well, fantastic. Um, oh, I see. I, I, yeah, I see. Yeah. Hey, hi, Alexis. This is Mr. Buse. I don't know if you can go ahead and pop in right here. Just say hi. Oh, we're not ready. This is my <laughs> wife. Hello. <laughs> he said he's gonna do the uh he's gonna work on the uh wall in about 15 minutes <laughs> the eye roll tells you how often <laughs> she's asking me to do that <laughs> hey this might be a long closure we've got right? three, three months to get this done it was nice, uh, to, meet you. nice <laughs> to meet you too um so uh great um we'll move on to the part of the show where you kind of give your book recommendations or tv show recommendations or music recommendations you said oh I, you don't think the students will will relate but let's go ahead uh, uh roll your roll your recommendations out there all right what are we talking about first your choice i'm, I'm um, interested in books and and a lot of students have been like oh what do people want me to read or what what are they reading well, for me, myself, um, I don't even know if you would probably get this from my goofy personality, but um, I try to be a very spiritual person. And right now I'm starting to go ahead and read my Bible for myself and my family. I'm uh, kind of starting all the way back at the beginning through Genesis. I oh. recently celebrated uh, a, a little a gift and I bought myself a, a nice little premium Bible. Uh, it's funny that you can go ahead and say that, but uh, yeah, there's, there's, uh, I got, I'm starting back in Genesis and I'm uh, going through everything. I got myself a uh, King James version. Oh, very I, nice. The English standard version study Bible to go ahead and uh, keep me going through that. And uh, just as I learned, I really enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, that's King, my book. That's what I'm reading that night. Yeah. King, the King James version is certainly the English teacher's dream Bible. I, uh, well, but, you know, if cool. that's your talent, I find it very difficult to read. Well, that's why you get the that's why you get the other translation side by side. And part oh, of being goodness. part of uh, being I use the standard version Bible, yeah. And but that sixteen eleven English, whoa. <laughs> no, no, it does it does not work when you're reading. Uh, I don't know how many thousands of pages that would be. No, but it's, just but you know, as you're saying with the difficult math problems, having some difficult English is a joy in itself. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, but you got to push through it. Yeah. If I go ahead and give up on it, then I'm going to lose all the richness of all the, the beauty that's in the old English. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, there's just something that you can say or you can interpret and read in the King James Version that really doesn't translate just as nice or as beautiful in the English Standard Version. However, I will possibly understand it a little bit more in the English Standard Version. But once I get this, I come over here and like, wow, that was, that was pretty cool how you say that. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there's a great thing about reading where you can say, oh, yeah, I love that. What yeah. does it mean? I, I love that, but I have no idea what it means, but I still love it. Um, okay, how about, how about music? What would you say? Well, I grew up in the city, uh, so my music is kind of that old school Chicago style house music. Oh. Um, I do enjoy a little old school DJ Markski, um, Bad Boy Bill, uh, that kind of uh, Chicago house and techno era that I like. So if a student, that's let's say, go ahead. 
if if a student is uh has never listened sat down and listened to house music on purpose where do you have them start i go to youtube but chicago what, house just just go ahead and youtube chicago house music that's it you'll get lost in there and if it's something that you pick up and like you'll go ahead and stay there and you'll keep on looking for some new things yeah yeah and then maybe frankie knuckles dj frankie knuckles they can go look at he has an honorary uh street named after him that's right that's right <laughs> great and then uh tv shows or movies um very immature i have not grown up yet so i borrowed my brother's disney account and i'm watching the old 1990s x-men tv cartoon shows the old spider-mans that's why that keeps me busy i didn't even know because i guess those are technically marvel properties so they're disney property that's right that's and right so you're you go on the, you, you're an you know what you're an avengers fan right i am an avengers fan okay i'm adding one to our next section okay so the next section this is uh we had an ask science section but we settled the question of is peanut butter a vegetable we decided it i actually can't remember now i think we decided it's, <laughs> it, it's it is a vegetable i it got so confusing but now i'm going to try a little bit of uh this, this request comes from shout out to uh, John H. Um, a little bit of this or that. So I'm going to name two things. You got to choose one of them. We're just going to go rapid fire. So first one, Crocs or flip flops? You got to go with flip flops. Flip flops. October or April? I'm going to go with October. Multiplication or division? Multiplication. First period off or eighth period off? Oof. <sighs> I'm going to go with first period off. That's the wrong choice. Trapezoids or rhombuses? Rhombus. Also the wrong choice. Cats or dogs? Oh, definitely dogs. Yeah, there we go. Um, this one, this one, I, I, have, I have a really strong answer to this one. I don't know why. Odd numbers or even numbers? Uh, even numbers. Why do I like even numbers more than odd numbers? Like, I don't trust odd numbers. Mm, um... I don't know why you don't do it, but I like even numbers because I like everybody to have a partner. Like my oh. plants, I have them in two so that they're never alone. <laughs> there we go. Your house <laughs> seems very peaceful and, and nice. and. Seems I, I, I'll show you some pictures. You know? Yeah. I'll show you some pictures. Okay. And then uh, Infinity War or Endgame? Um, I'm going to go with uh, Endgame. Okay. Fantastic. So um, before we sign off, any uh, challenges to the students or questions uh, you want the students to ponder? You know, I wouldn't say challenges necessarily, but th th there's got to be a silver lining to everything. And as horrible as what it is that we're experiencing right now, I think you have to have a mentality of what can I gain from this? And right now, um, I don't like being cooped up in the house, but because I am, I'm also finding a lot of time to get things done that I was never able to do when I didn't have time. So try not to be cooped up in the house and bored and not have anything to do, but maybe take the opportunity to find something new to learn and do something that you haven't done before and just overall make yourself better. Yeah. That, that would be my challenge to anybody and anybody that's cooped up at home. Take this time to self-reflect and just improve on yourself in whatever way that you can well i feel refreshed this was a very refreshing interview thank you mr zaragoza um and stay on the line uh i'm just going to pause the recording perfect uh, signing off uh see you all later adios wow thank you mr zaragoza that was wonderful remember everybody you've got a lot of time right now do something with it that can make you even more yourself for now, I'm going to sign off. Don't forget to keep on reading, keep those pencils sharp, keep on listening to people, keep on talking to people, and stay safe out there. Signing off for now, this is Mr. Buse.